At an emotional press conference, Mick and Mairead Philpott had appeared heartbroken. Their six children had been killed in a house fire and they broke down as they appealed for help in finding who did it. But it was an act. A jury at Nottingham Crown Court today decided that the couple were guilty of the children's manslaughter, along with a third defendant, Paul Mosley. Our Midlands correspondent, Dash Nassoni, reports. They thought they could outwit the police, the press and the public. Excuse me a minute. <laughs> but their anguish was an act. No, I didn't see any tears. And the only word, really, that sums it up for me is it was a sham. I said in the story. Look, you know something? Have they got any evidence on you? And they've got nothing on me. Nothing. That story was meant to cover up an almost inconceivable crime which left six of their own children dead. We, the family of Michael Philpott, believe justice has been served. This past year has been a very difficult time for our family as we have had to come to terms with what Michael Mairead and Paul Mosley have done. Mick and Mairead Philpott lived here in this three-bedroom semi in Derby. They enjoyed a somewhat unorthodox lifestyle. For years, Mick's girlfriend and her children had also lived with them. Although it was an unusual setup, they all claimed they were perfectly happy. But in May last year, the Philpots were the apparent victims of an arson attack when someone set fire to their house as they slept. These newly released pictures show the appalling aftermath of what one firefighter described as the most harrowing incident he had ever had to deal with. Six children killed. Dwayne, Jade, John, Jack, Jesse and Jaden. Cheerful children, mischievous children, but... The boys liked the football. She was the only girl, of course, Jade of the Six. Um, very popular girl, quite a bright girl. Father Alan Burbridge is chair of governors at the children's school and knew them well. He says initially there was a huge amount of sympathy for the grieving parents. Fundraising started very, very quickly. We had a meeting to see what, what ways we could get involved. And so, how you could help the family. And how, yes. May, this, the people wanted to do something. And so, in a surge of support, £12,000 was raised for the family. But then rumours began to circulate on this estate. The fire had started just hours before Mick Philpott had been due in court for a custody hearing over some of his children. Was this really a coincidence? Attention started to focus on his chaotic lifestyle. I am Get working. a job. I'm looking after my Get kids. Get a job. Listen, this shows you what a Get you are, doesn't it? Get a job. You, useless, you are. Yeah, Seriously, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. like the rest. Talk yeah. to that because you're not worth it. I work, mate. Branded shameless Mick, he appeared in this documentary with the formidable Anne Widdicombe, who confronted him about his life on benefits. This one here is uh, baby number 17. And this one here is baby number 18. And I'll tell you what, if the public don't like it, you can get Perfect material, perhaps, for the infamous Jeremy Kyle. But behind the colourful stories of sex and dogging in Derby car parks, a controlling, manipulative man. Philpot had a history of grooming vulnerable younger women. He was obviously the dominant partner. And now she's going to speak! Right, you just tell them what we said. <laughs> so you told her what to say as well? I'll tell you what, I'll say it. But Mick's authority was challenged when his girlfriend finally decided she'd had enough. Three months before the fire, Lisa Willis walked out, taking her children with her. According to the prosecution, Mick Philpott wanted revenge, but he also wanted the financial benefits he'd lost when his girlfriend moved their children out. The couple hatched a plan, along with their friend Paul Mosley, here in the striped T-shirt, to set a fire and to blame it on Lisa. A crazy venture which has gone badly wrong and not having sufficient awareness of the endangering the lives of their children with fire. 
Mick Philpot was supposed to have used this ladder to rescue the children. He wanted to play the hero, but when that went wrong, he thought he'd play the victim. The couple even called a press conference to appeal for witnesses. I was one of the journalists who came to this conference centre to watch the couple's extraordinary performance. One senior officer told me it was as though Mick Philpott relished the media attention. But what Philpott didn't realise was that as he was watching the cameras, the detective sitting next to him was watching him, because Mick Philpott was already the main suspect. Suspicions in this case grew, I think, from a very early stage. Mick Philpott, before the press conference, was very jovial, more or less bounced into the room, seemed to be very excited at the prospect of going out to face the media. Detectives bugged the couple's hotel room and the recordings formed much of their evidence. They also found petrol on all three defendants' clothings and in the U-bend of the sink. But even when they were presented with this evidence, they continued to deny their involvement. Ever the showman, Mick Philpott often broke down in court, but the jury didn't believe the tears. Mick and Mairead Philpott and their best friend Paul Mosley were all found guilty of the manslaughter of six children. This has been an extraordinary story, but at the heart of it, six children who were killed as they slept in their own beds, killed by their own parents and their parents' best friend. No wonder then that during the trial, the judge had to remind the jurors that this was real life and not some TV show. And when we were called back in today to court at four o'clock, the judge also warned everybody that she wanted silence. But still, Mick and Mairead's own relatives couldn't help but clap as the verdicts were read out. Because these were defendants who had tried to con their own community and everybody who had loved and supported them. And even now they try to continue with that con. For I've spoken to somebody who's visited Mick Philpott in prison and who told me that he is still trying to claim that he had nothing to do with those deaths, still even trying to gain sympathy for himself. Now, although he was still very obviously the dominant player, detectives say we will probably never know who poured the petrol and who lit the match in what so many people who worked on this case have described as the worst they have ever dealt with. All three defendants were found guilty and all three will be sentenced tomorrow.